people stand up, please welcome to the stage, the Fantastic Minds. Woo! Now is Billy Story, please. Woo! 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 Hi. <clears throat> Hi. My name is Moritz. I'm a grown German man. And my favorite dinosaur is the Triceratops. <laughs> I'm a dad. And I have the pleasure of raising two very lovely kids, age five and eight. And I'm a nervous driver. When I was 17, I failed my driver license test on the last few hundred meters of the test drive when I decided not to stop and let the other car <laughs> pass through, but to kind of squeeze through and made the other car stop. And I can tell you the examiner did not like this. <laughs> and this failure trauma of the last few hundred meters sticks with me until today. I get easily stressed when I'm in traffic. So for example, when me and my rather small car are surrounded by these huge trucks, and with my stress around trucks, I made the only sensible career choice, logistics. More specifically, <laughs> freight transportation. Now you might ask yourself, in which capacity could this nervous driver work in transportation, right? So, but relax, I don't drive a van. I don't drive a delivery bike. I don't like drive a forklift, though that would be cool in a sense, because that's Triceratops, kind of the prehistoric forklift. In sense, right? <laughs> no, I'm a professor, I do research, and I teach the next generation of decision makers on how to align this ever-growing sector of freight transport with our very finite planetary boundaries. And I can tell you, it's going great so far. We're all going to be fine. <laughs> At least that's what I scream to myself when I look into the eyes of my sweet growing kids. <laughs> so when my kids were younger, they knew I was doing something with the environment, right? But they never really knew what I was doing all day in the office. And in, in Germany, on TV, in kids' shows, professors often appear in the program. And then they usually look like mad scientists, right? So this very thick glasses, <laughs> and white lab coat, and exploded hair, super stereotype overload. Um, so not quite like me, I would say. And one time I was watching such a lovely and highly accurate depiction of my own profession together with my my daughter Ida. And then I and then I mustered all the courage, and then then I turned to her and said, "Well, you know, sweetie, I'm a professor too." And she looked me straight oh, no. in the eyes, obviously irritated. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, sweetie, I am. You can trust me. So Ida was not convinced, right? So she looked at me, took my hand, and talked to me like you would talk to a very disoriented child that just woke up. Dad, you're not a professor. You're just a truck expert. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, what is it? What is the truck expert even doing? Well, I, I don't. So I, you, you want to have the trucks off the road, and then when people buy too much stuff and that needs to go into trucks, then you get a little sad, maybe. <laughs> wow, I, I, I didn't know what to say because on the one hand, she nailed it, right? She explained to me the content of my work so much better than I ever had to someone else. But on the other hand, I mean, did my own daughter just question my academic credentials? <laughs> so 30 minutes later, I ordered one of these stereotypical lab codes and lots of hairspray because I need to have some proof that I'm a real professor, right? <laughs> so logistics makes sure that stuff ends up where it's supposed to end up. Could be in the warehouse, on the retail shelf, or right at your doorstep. And one of the great innovations in logistics was the standardized shipping container. Yes, they do have a purpose beyond ending up <laughs> as tiny houses or as cool bars in a beach club, right? Where Lucy chats with the barista because yes, Lucy, it is the law. <laughs> No, actually, they have the job of making loading and offloading of ships so much quicker, right? So through this innovation, offloading had gotten quicker, but the customs process stayed the same. So only once the container was off the ship, this very lengthy, complex, boring, long 
process started and yeah really painfully long and i mean like post brexit border control level painful right <laughs> so containers that arrived that just contained small baby dolls by the time the the customs process was over they contained full grown barbie dolls <laughs> 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 and so someone had the great idea to make this process more efficient, right? And uh, just a tiny bit evil for the, more evil for the planet, because it became standard practice to fly the freight documentation to the port of destination. So the customs process could start while the freight was still out at sea, right? So we now needed two carbon releasing modes of transportation to achieve the one delivery of the container full of baby dolls. <laughs> so from today's perspective, that feels a bit like my mom sending me a text message to let me know that she might call me in an hour, right? <laughs> and, I, and I actually like when she does that. <laughs> um, so today, logistics companies are up to speed with technology, with IT, with all that, right? Especially the parcel delivery services. So. Just a show of hands, who here has received a parcel to his or her home in the past two weeks? And just to be sure, because we had we heard Lucy earlier, right? It's not about delivered babies, it's just about parcels. <laughs> so show of hands. <laughs> All right. So quite a few. So you know that we have full transparency of the process now, right? We can I can conveniently observe on my smartphone how the delivery van approaches my home step by step by step, right? um like and, and it's like this feeling of 800 700 meters 600 meters and it's such a beautiful moment of joyful anticipation at least for some people not for me because i get to relive that failure trauma of the last few hundred meters of my driver test again right <laughs> sometimes even daily <laughs> And I think all of you have experienced that that emotional roller coaster of this last mile already, right? When you look at the screen, it's like almost there, almost there, looking good. All right, oh, oh, he passed. Oh, no, no worries, no worries. He'll 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 turn around. He's done that before, hasn't he? Oh, he won't. And then two days later. I get that dreadful postcard, right? <laughs> Dear customer, unfortunately, we could not deliver your parcel as no one was home. Yes, I was. <laughs> Pick up your parcel at the parcel shop just five miles away from you every second Wednesday from 10 to 10.30. <laughs> and, and all of that for hairspray, right? But I'm with Kate Winslet on this one because I'm worth it. <laughs> so everyone, everything we use in logistics, every truck, every ship, every airplane runs on fossil fuels. So essentially, let's face it, liquefy dinosaurs, right? And I want to change that. I want to have triceratops free logistics, keeping them in the ground. <laughs> you know? And on a good day, I feel bold, like, like a triceratops facing the mighty T-Rex with the very short hands. Um, and then, and I, then I think we can do it, right? We can get there. Fossil free transportation for everyone and everything. But not everyone, sadly, shares this vision. Sometimes I get a call out of the blue and then someone, let's call him Henry, asks for shortcuts, right? So like, come on, Moritz, we've known each other for so long already. Tell me the secret recipe for cheap and quick and painless decarbonization. <laughs> I mean, as if I would hold back if there was a secret recipe. <laughs> Wait, screw you, Henry. Don't you know I'm a millennial and I don't like unexpected telephone calls? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why my mom sends me texts in advance, right? Hmm. So great decarbonization requires work and changes to decade-old processes. And not everyone is ready for that changes. Many people still try to somehow squeeze through, right? And I know this does not work. Mm -hmm. Also with beyond driver tests, right? 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure that the second most Google term in the logistics context, right after where the heck is my parcel, is <laughs> carbon offsets. <laughs> Planting trees. I mean, it won't keep the dinos in the ground for sure, but it gives people a good feeling of having done something, right? <laughs> you know what gives me a good feeling? Ripping off the tape of parcels that I got. <laughs> because in the end, I got the hairspray, I got that lab coat, I tried it on, and I don't want to brag, but it fits me like a glove. Also, Kate Winston agrees. <laughs> <laughs> but after some contemplation, I decided to send it back. So I brought it back to the parcel shop and on a second Wednesday at 10, 15. And there was a long line of people out there <laughs> because returns happen a lot. One in four parcels are sent back. And to me, that feels like too much. And yes, I am part of that problem, obviously, because maybe I shouldn't have ordered that lab coat in the first place, because after all, I am just a truck expert. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Doug Morris. Let's go to gallery view. Thank you, Niels, as well. Um, please, everybody, unmute and let's give Moritz a big round of applause. Nice to <laughs> Thank you.